Okay, guys, this is our catch-up chapter here. Um, it's called the physical exam. However, what we're really going to be talking about with this particular chapter is how to position a patient properly and what is the name of the different positions. All right, so we have talked about objective versus subjective already. And just as a recap, right, objective are things you can see, measure, right, physically prove, whereas subjective are um, all those things that the patient says that you have no way of proving. Uh, we ought to refer to objective things when we talk <coughs> about diseases as signs and subjective things as symptoms, right? So a symptom of a disease is the subjective okay, component and the signs of a disease is the objective component. Um, lab for us, we're not gonna get super detailed into this because we have a whole course in this. However, of course, lab tests help us to confirm diagnosis, uh, determine what we call our differential diagnosis which is really a fancy term for, you know, what are the potential things that are wrong with the patient? And of course, our prognosis, what is our long-term outcome for our patients? All right, so let's say you've got a patient who's coming in, they're getting examined today, what are some of the things you need to do? Of course, we're gonna bring them back to the room, offer the bathroom. I wanna caution you that, of course, if you need to get a urine sample from them, um, don't let them go to the bathroom without a urine cup, uh, although you can certainly collect it early. We will talk about proper ways to gown and drape a patient. Be aware that some folks, again, are more modest, as we talked about, and some a little bit uh, less concerned. So do look to your patient if they need an extra gown, an extra sheet to cover up. Um, let them be comfortable. All right, some of the things you're going to do is to observe or to inspect, which of course just requires your eyes. Uh, you're just looking at some general health. What is their posture? What is their movement? What does their skin look like? You know, is there anything obvious at the surface? Okay, that would be of a concern. Uh, what are their mannerisms, right? Do they look like they're in pain? Um, you know, withdrawn, okay? Are they groomed? Do they have body symmetry and contour, right? If they're complaining, especially about a musculoskeletal complaint, okay, um, say a sprained ankle, right, is one look relatively normal and the other one is twice the size, red, right, has edema, certainly that wouldn't be symmetrical. Um, skin rashes and certainly obvious deformities like we talked about with first aid. All right, the healthcare provider is then going to palpate. And palpate, of course, means to touch. Okay, when touching, you can feel for masses, lumps. What does the skin feel like? What is its temperature, right? Is it warm, indicating infection or swelling? Um, and of course, they're gonna use fingertips, perhaps one hand, both hands. Okay, that is something that um, is taught in medical schools or upper level. Uh, healthcare programs. The healthcare provider may percuss, and percuss really means to tap, right? Um, so what they will do, and they often use fingers to do this, is that they will tap, particularly over places like the chest and the abdomen. Um, they do sound different, right? When you tap over something that should be full of air, say the lung space, okay, they sound relatively hollow. Um, certainly if a patient has got pneumonia and you're tapping, it's gonna sound, okay, much more consolidated, right, dull. It's not gonna have that same sort of echo like it's an empty space. But to percuss for you guys is to tap. And then auscultation. You guys have done some of this, right, with blood pressure, um, assessing heart rates in different ways other than radial. But to auscultate requires listening, right, and of course that generally requires a stethoscope if we're gonna listen inside the body. All right, we have done a term we call mensuration. All right, we've talked about heights and weights, but some of the stuff we haven't talked about and we will see in some future chapters um, is to measure lengths of limbs, right? If one side is uneven from the other, we can certainly create some mechanical problems. Uh, you could measure range of motion, which is how much does a patient flex, extend, rotate, and of course there's a lot of pediatric measurements that we're gonna do with the pediatric unit.
uh, unit. Um, and of course, use a tape measure. For all of these measurements, if you do not use a tape measure or something to physically measure these numbers that you are placing into your soap notes, okay, insurance companies will not accept that. All right, the doctor may do what we call manipulation. Again, we're going to look at this a lot with our physical therapy chapter. But essentially what this is, is looking at, you know, how much do the joints move, okay, compared right and left. And we often refer to this as ROM, which is range of motion. Okay, the bulk of this chapter really is this stuff, positioning and draping. All right, as we're doing different types of exams, the patient may have to take clothes off, not necessarily always, um, but may have to be unclothed for parts of the exam. And we do want to consider the modesty, embarrassment, plus temperature, right? I mean, it can get very cold if you're waiting for an hour for a doctor, okay, inside that room, um, and you've got nothing to cover you but a flimsy sheet. So do consider what you're giving the doctor or giving the patient while waiting for the doctor. Um, different types of positions are also going to be used for different types of exams, and it'll be fairly obvious once you see the different positions why that is. All right, so our first position here is this top right-hand picture. We refer to this position as supine or dorsal recumbent, or sorry, horizontal recumbent. Okay, so supine is generally the way we go, and supine really refers to one of two things. It is either palms up in this case, or it is entire body up, so face up, lay on your back. All right, this of course is a good position for a patient if we're going to be looking at something on the anterior side of the patient, right? So if we need to see something on the front side, this is a great position. All right, of course we are going to gown our patients, right? And oftentimes do consider that the opening may have to be towards the front if we have to look at something on the anterior side of our patient. And drapes or gowns uh, or toweling or sheets that are going over our patients are generally going shoulders all the way down to feet. All right, our second one here is this bottom right-hand picture, which we refer to as dorsal recumbent, which is essentially the same as the above picture, however, with one minor difference. And of course, that is to bring the knees up, feet flat on the floor, okay, um, draping would be exactly the same way, right, shoulders down to feet. If you're going to do an OBGYN exam in this position, you may do it in a diamond shape, okay, with the point in between the knees. Um, the reason for bringing the knees up is it actually reduces pressure on the lumbar spine, right, so if somebody's got lower back issues and is finding it very difficult to be just regular old supine, Okay, you can simply have them draw their knees up, or the other method is to simply place a rolled towel, sheet, pillow, or if you've got something as fancy as a roll underneath the knee, when the knees pop up, okay, it reduces pressure on that low back. So it is for patient comfort. All right, this top right-hand side is lithotomy, and of course, you should recognize this as being for your OBGYN okay, type exams. And of course, we start in supine. Generally, gowns are going to be open towards the front because we're going to have to do um, a breast exam at some point in this position. Uh, you will break out the stirrups, okay, help the patient get their heels properly into the stirrups, and then they need to move down, okay, until their buttocks is all the way at the end, and it may feel like they're going to fall off a little bit. Um, so just if you're assisting the healthcare provider or the doctor, certainly stay by their shoulders and just reassure them Okay, that they in fact are going to remain on the table. To get out of this position, of course, you want to make sure that their body is pushed up and securely on the table before they remove their legs from the stirrups. All right, the next two are related. Okay, the one at the bottom right hand side is a semi fowler's, and essentially all you're doing here is going supine but raising the head to about 45 degrees. And then the next will be full Fowler's, which means you're going to see at a full 90 degrees with the head raised. And essentially, these are folks for respiratory or heart issues, right? When they go fully flat, um, it does become much more difficult to breathe. So if they're complaining of having difficulty breathing, okay, in a full supine or dorsal recumbent position, the semi Fowler's is a much more comfortable position for lots of folks. Okay, and of course, here is high fowlers, which is, or full fowlers, which is 90 degrees. Okay, the only difference is just the amount of tilt. 
All right, now we're going to go the other direction on the bottom right-hand side, which is prone. Okay, the prone position is face down. Okay, patient's backside up. And of course, the gown should be open to the back when it's placed on the patient. Drapes should go all the way down from shoulders all the way down to ankles. All right, knee chest position, rarely used. Uh, this is mostly for proctology or sigmoidoscopy, but you're going to see that there are better positions for this. Um, they had proctological tables. Okay, um, and let's talk some fenestrated drapes. I know we've mentioned this before in the surgical unit. Okay, but a fenestrated drape is any drape with a hole in it. Okay, and let's take a peek at what knee chest position looks like. Okay, so this is a knee chest position. You can see why we don't often use this. It would be a relatively uncomfortable position for most things. Um, so again, uncommonly used, but be aware that this one does exist. All right, now let's talk about our Sims position, which is a much more common position for these types of exams. And this one is side-lying, generally left side-lying if you can, but obviously if you need to see something. Okay, on the left side, you would go right side lying. Um, the arm at the bottom is going to come underneath and behind the patient. The knees are, the bottom leg is going to be straight. The top leg will be bent. Okay, and a pillow will be placed in between the knees. And that top knee is going to come over, okay, that bottom leg. So again, bottom straight, top bent. And you're actually going to see a slight rotation in the patient when you stick this arm behind and you straighten the bottom leg bend the top leg. So it should present the back side a little bit up, which is good for rectal exams. Okay. Um, and it's a comfortable position for the patient. Okay, this is easy to maintain. Trendelenburg we did talk about when we talked first aid. And Trendelenburg is essentially head down, legs up position. And of course, this was really good for somebody in shock, right? Low blood pressure, lightheadedness. All right, we will finish up this rest of this lecture in class, but please review your positions. Okay, come and prepare to practice those. Have a good day.